everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you wanna receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hi everyone! Welcome back to another class. I am super excited for this one. I think I say that probably for all of them though. But we get to use a bunch of fan brushes. So I'm excited for this one. Um, if you have not gotten your fan brushes out, make sure that they are stiff and hog brush, uh, hog bristle fan brushes. There is a difference um, in not necessarily quality, but these are the two that I'm talking about. This one is hog. It is stiff and it bounces right back up and it's very textured. And this one is very soft and you can see like one is like thin. Let's see. One's like thin and I don't know. It's like thin and fine. And this one's thick and like rough. So you get lots more texture with this. Um, there's other ways to get tree texture, um, like putting every individual, like, like maybe using a round brush, you could do that too, if you don't have one. But we're going to be having some fun with um, these. So these are linked below. Um, they are Zem. They're on my Amazon shop, I think. I think I put them on there. Um, if not, then I'll do that after this. But um, I like them. So they're... I don't feel like they're overly cheap, but they are on the cheaper side uh, in terms of buying them. So, um, yeah, grab your, grab your texture brushes and, uh, yeah. Um, let me know if you're here in the comments, let me know you're painting with me. I always love seeing who's painting along. Um, and even if you are painting afterwards, you could still comment um, and say hello. Um, I do have a traceable for this one. However, this one's a little bit more nature and I feel like obviously if you need the traceable, it's available to patrons, but I won't be using one. Um, it might be helpful. I forgot to get my ruler out of the kids room. I wonder if there's something else I could use. Um, it might be helpful to have a ruler of some sort. Um, hello. Um, yes. Hello. 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 Welcome. Um, yeah. If you have a ruler of some sort or something to get like a straight edge, that might help with a lot of the trees because all the trees are going pretty much straight up. Um, you could use tape for this. You could use, um, I don't know, all sorts of things, uh, to get that straight edge that might help you, that like might help you. Um, so feel free to grab a straight edge or tape, um, whatever you feel. <laughs> you always come in at like 4 a.m. cause that's, cause you're 12, 12 uh, hours ahead of me and I'm always just like, why are you, what are you doing up? But thanks for being here. Um, hi, Tanya. Glad to have you guys chime in. Yeah, I don't know what you're doing. Why are you here? Thanks for thanks for being here. 
Maybe I'll lull you to, lull, lull you to sleep. There we go. <laughs> um, okay, I have all my colors out. I can go over colors. I have two different greens because I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use. So you don't need to have two greens, but I have a lighter green and a darker green. And I'm probably just going to mix them all kind of together. I'm about to go to bed after my shift. Your shift? What do you uh, What do you do for work that keeps you up that late? Obviously, there's plenty of things that could keep you up that late, but I'm curious. I'm trying to make sure everybody knows I'm here. from home okay have anyone who's here now have you ever painted anything like this that's like has like the tree like the sun poking through the trees and has like like sun rays like this I know a lot of people like to do sun rays but they don't some people don't know how to approach it so I'm glad I'm doing this live class for free because I think it'll be really accessible um, to a lot of different people of how to do something like this. And I feel like it's a lot easier than people think if given the correct tools to do it. So I'm excited. Um, how about your videos after the live stream? Yeah, a lot of people do. And that's totally fine too. Um, but I'm glad you're here for the live anyways. Um, hope, nope, this is a first. I'm super excited. Awesome. I'm glad you're here. I'm just going to try to grab the picture so I can post a story saying, hey, come join us. Hi, Nancy. Hello, hello, welcome. Hi. I was saying earlier that um, if you would like to use the traceable, you can, but since it's nature and it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly like the picture, mine will, I'm going to preface this, mine will not look like the picture um, because I'm going to do my own thing, but using the picture as a reference um, and inspiration. Um, anyways, so the traceable is there for anyone who wants to use it but I won't be using it, um, at least not for this specific one. Ones like this, I'm always excited to see everybody else's because nature is so uh, not necessarily symmetrical in things, so it's always fun to see because everybody's is so different and it's, it's fun to see. Have you tried oils? I have not. I've always wanted to, um, specifically because of Bob Ross. And I feel like I, when I was younger, I tried to do a Bob Ross uh, one with acrylics and it did not come out the way I wanted it to. And I have not tried a Bob Ross one yet. I know that I could probably replicate it a little bit better now that I know acrylics better. Um, but I've always wanted to try oils in terms of that. Um, but no, I have not. And that's actually, that's mostly because of the space I'm in. Um, as you can see, that's my background, but that's my bed. So I'm in my, we live in a two bedroom apartment right now. And it's very, it's very small. Like my office is also my bedroom and it's also the nursery. <laughs> So like a lot of things going on in the small space and we do not have good ventilation and I know with oils you should have good ventilation and wear gloves and um, one of the main reasons is like my kids kind of roam the house sometimes and if they touch it and it's still wet then 
uh, I will I won't know until I can't fix it anymore um, but yeah um, hi Nancy yes I don't know what you're saying yes to I can't see anyone's comments um, you might have to turn on the comments like section depending on if you're on your phone or on the um, on like what what device you're on um, Bob Ross, Bill Alexander too. Yes. Also Kevin Hill. Kevin Hill has a very Bob Ross style though, which is probably why I like him and a very calming voice. So if you haven't looked up, if you like oil painting and like tutorials and things like that, I would look up Kevin Hill because, um, I feel like he's like the current Bob Rossy sort of, sort of thing, um, sort of teacher in my opinion, totally my opinion. Um, yeah yeah he's he's pretty cool <laughs> Jerry you're now I haven't heard that one uh, what type of green do we need? I have two different greens. Um, essentially a light green and a dark green. I have a, it's called pale green, but um, see in, in what you're seeing looks like a pale green, but what it actually is, it's a very, it's almost like a neon bright green. I don't know why it's called pale green and my lighting doesn't do it justice. It's a pretty bright green. Um, and then I have Hooker's Green, um, Hooker's Green Hue Permanent from Liquitex, and this is from, actually, I can get you, I refilled this one, so this is actually not what the color is, let's see if I have it, that's my phthalo blue, my yellow, that I refilled, and then, let's see if I can get my green, do I have my green? Let me just pull this out. Uh, Alright, this is... Um, this is the same color, and this color is the Liquitex Basics, and it's light green permanent. And I feel like this is more true to what it actually is, pale green. I think of, like, I don't know, pale, like, pastel almost. Um, but, yeah, I feel like it's more of a bright green. Anyways, um, hello, hi Allison, apologies for the bag, um, hi Allison, good to have you here, uh, Andrew Tischler is also amazing, I'll have to look up these names, I probably am not, um, as familiar with their names because I don't do oils or else I probably would look them up more, um, I stumbled upon Kevin Hill, probably watching Bob Ross videos and seeing if I could replicate one of them a while ago. Um, which is probably why I found him. I like watching oil painters. I'm just jealous of how long it takes for oil to dry because they can blend like for forever. <laughs> so, um, but for classes like this, it's really handy for everything to dry because you can do layers upon layers upon layers in the same class. So, um, I missed a few. Tabitha, thank you for asking that again because I missed it. Um, do I do kid friendly classes? Yes. Uh, to be honest, in terms of kid friendly, all of my classes are kid friendly. Um, in terms of the content, in terms of the, uh, how I am in how I teach or my language or anything like that. Um, it's all kid friendly. Um, if you're talking about classes for specifically for kids, I do have a few, um, on my channel. I don't do kid specific classes. I think I, like I talked to my husband about this. I would love to do like a once a month specific kids class and it's very geared towards kids. It's like a shorter class with more kid friendly content. Um, in terms of like what we're painting um, but right now I paint live like twice a month so if I did a kids class and an adult class it would like 
cut my adult classes in half essentially. Um, so I haven't, I haven't done that. If I ever do more classes in a month, I will probably put in a kid's specific class because I love teaching for classes. Um, with that said, if interested in, um, if interested in like booking a kid's class, like for you and people, you know, like a, like a zoom private class, I do, uh, teach those. So feel free to message me if that's what you're interested in, because I do do like group privates and paint nights over zoom. So friends can be in their own houses or across the state. Doesn't matter. Um, we just pick a time and we go from there. Um, yay, Nancy. I'm glad you got it working. Um, same here. Kind of impatient. Can't wait to, can't wait to dry paintings. Yeah, I think, I think I would do different paintings for different reasons. So if I was doing like large scale paintings, I might, I might do oils. I don't know. I always go back and forth, but obviously I don't have the space to do large scale paintings, so it hasn't really even been an option. <laughs> um, but that would be cool. If I had a garage, if I had a garage, I would probably do, I would love to do like a big painting. Um, I would love to do an online class with my daughter, but these are a bit too much for her at her age. Uh, so I'll go check out your page and see if I can find more simpler ones. You're welcome. Um, if you go onto my, let's see, I'll, I'll grab a link real fast. Um, if you go onto my Facebook page, my community page, um, and you go over to the media section or the albums, you can... Um, you can scroll through every class I've ever taught online and it'll say whether or not it's a Patreon class or a free YouTube live class. Um, I also have, and it'll, it'll give links and it gives links to traceables and it gives all that information within that post. And then also everyone else who's like joined along and painted with me, um, the other option is if you're only looking for free classes, then I would go to my YouTube page and go under the playlist um, of like, I think it's YouTube live replays or, or live class replays or something like that. Um, and there's a playlist that has all of the live free classes that I've done. Um, so those are two ways that you can look up content um, and classes that I've done. Um, will the canvas have a background color? We are going to, I'm not going to pre-paint my canvas. I like to do everything in the class so that people who didn't know we needed to prep our canvas don't get left behind. Um, so we're going to prep our canvas and do everything um, here. If you if you want to do the traceable, you'll have to wait for the our prepping to either dry or you can... Um, do the traceable now and color in in black color in the trees um, and then when we do our prepping you'll still be able to see everything through um, so we will be prepping in like a orangey tan color um, and that's mostly just so that we can get a color on here and then when we put our white on we can make sure that it's all covered um, I've started doing preppings like this on certain uh, classes because I feel like when there's white involved it's really hard to figure out if you've actually painted the canvas all white <laughs> because the canvas is white um, but if you pre gesso it then I guess it doesn't really matter 
Uh, so your question, will the canvas have a background color? Technically, yes. Um, so that when we go over it with white and go over certain parts of it, um, we'll know that we covered it all. anyone have any questions before we get started on like either supplies or um, I don't know maybe anything it's been a nice engaging welcome chat just realized this is like casting a shadow on me full time. It's nice. I'm excited to paint. I like whipped up. So if you're a Patreon or if you're a patron on Patreon, you'll know that we have a Northern Lights class coming up. Um, and before I had like a, like a little bit of time before I went live, and I was like, oh, I could probably whip something up. And I have this, I have these um, seven, five by seven uh, canvases from Hippie Crafter that I still haven't used. I've used a couple of them. Um, and I was like, I wonder if I could do this in like a few minutes to kind of practice for our class. And this is what I did in literally under 10 minutes. Now part of that is because you have to do the background very quickly because it's acrylics and it dries, but look at how cute, so pretty. Um, I can't wait to like adjust things to make it better for the class, um, but it came out really well. Anyways, we may or may not do water. I liked the water, so I might add it to the class. Because in the original photo, uh, I didn't have, I don't think I had water. But water is fun. So, yeah, splattering. It has lots of splattering. I mean, it's got like the, the stars. And then you kind of just add stuff on that. Anyways, I enjoyed it. But literally, it took me 10 minutes, and I'm so excited to show that class. <laughs> um, I want to try it on a bigger canvas, but we have to... We're probably going to practice... In like in the class, we're probably going to practice on a smaller canvas um, to help... To help get into that. Get into like how it works with acrylics, because it's very different uh, acrylics than it is oils. Um, I don't have the greens that you are using. Um, honestly, any green. It doesn't have, that's why I didn't put a specific green because I didn't want people to go out and buy specific greens. It doesn't have to be a specific green. Um, it can be this green. It can be a light green. It can be a viridian green. Uh, it, it can be a primary green. I don't know what other greens are out there. Um, you can make a green with your blue and your yellow. Uh, the yellow I have is the medium hue, uh, medium yellow, and honestly, there's not going to be a whole lot of yellow in the background. It'll mostly just be a uh, light olive green. Olive green uh, would probably be fine because the trees are going to be that more earthy tone anyways. Um, grass green would work too. Honestly, like, I will be, I have this green, the super bright green, I will be toning mine down with like my yellows and my browns to make it more of that earthy green um so if you already have a, a green that's got that earthy tone to it great um i'm really all for using what you have um unless 
unless I have something that I need a specific color for like um, I have a turquoise that I love using um, and it's really helpful to have that specific color when I'm doing oceans and things like that or even a viridian green when I when I'm doing oceans otherwise you can just use whatever colors you have that's why that's why when I have like green yellow it doesn't necessarily matter what kind of yellow just whatever green yellow you have Hopefully that makes sense. I think of any um oh as for the blue I put phthalo blue on there but you don't need phthalo blue um phthalo green is good that's a little bit of a bluer tone but that's fine um that's gonna be just like a deeper green um and that would work out fine too um I might add some phthalo blue to my green to make it like deeper and more of like a darker hue. I am all for adding colors to darken my colors rather than black because uh, black, adding black and white will bring down or like bring up the saturation of the colors. Um, so by adding black to it, you will take out the color a little bit rather than adding a brown or a dark blue. Um, so I'll, you know, phthalo, phthalo green is, is a good color. Okay, let me just turn my phone vibrate off. And I'm excited to paint. All right, let's get started. See you on the other side. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hi everyone and welcome back to another class. I'm super excited for this one. So go ahead and grab your brushes, grab your paints, and let's get started. So for today, 
um, I'm using an 11 by 14 stretch canvas. Uh, as usual, this is a Fredericks canvas. Uh, they sent me a bunch of canvases a little while ago and I'm still working through them. I think they're great, they're super top, um, and um, I've been loving using them. Uh, for my acrylics, um, I, I'm using acrylics today and most of these are going to be Hippie Crafter. They sent me these a while back and um, for the most part I'm still working through them but I have refilled a couple of these with similar colors from Liquitex. Um, so I'm going to be using a mix of that. Um, and then for the brushes I have a kit, just an array of kit. So use what you have. If you don't have a specific brush um, and you want to know what is like it that maybe you have, feel free to uh, comment down below and let me know if you don't have a brush, what would be a good alternative. For the colors today, I'm going to be using my black and my white standard. And then I have a raw umber. You could use burnt umber or any other brown. This is a dark brown specifically. And then I have my phthalo blue. Any blue should do. It's just to add um, a hint to the background sky, but then also if uh, phthalo blue is nice to have if you want to darken up any of the greens that we're going to be using. That one's nice. And then uh, yellow, medium hue. And then I have two different greens. I have a light green hue and a hooker's green hue. Either of these uh, would work as well as a phthalo green, a grass green, um, any other green really that you have. I'm gonna be adding my browns and my yellows to mix up the colors a little bit. Um, so if you have like an olive green or like a more earthy toned green, that's totally fine too. Um, that's totally fine. Um, we will be working with the colors that we have and you don't need to get new colors to do this. Um, the last thing that is not on the color list uh, for today is going to be an orange. We're going to uh, prep in like a orangey color so that when we put on our whites and our other colors, we'll be able to see what we're doing and see where we've missed. Sometimes when we have a white canvas, it's hard to, it's hard to see that. So um, I've done this in a couple other classes, but that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, yeah. So we're also going to kind of sketch in where everything is with that color. Um, so that will be helpful. If you are using the traceable, which is available on my Patreon for all patrons, um, you can sketch that in now and color in all the trees with some black. And then when we do our prep, you'll be able to see the trees through that prep work. The other option uh, depending on how you're tracing is to prep an orange and then let that dry and do like a tracing over that. So it's totally up to you how you want to do that. Uh, even though this is live, you can pause it and do your thing and then continue it. Just know that you will be a little bit behind the live. So if you have questions, um, I will get it as soon as you give as soon as you send it, but then you won't get it until you catch up to the time that I got it, if that makes sense. So you'll be a little bit behind. So just know that if you do pause it. Um, I think that's it. Other than other supplies I have um, is a palette. This is a gray palette. It's on my Amazon um, list. Paper towel, water cup. Uh, that's off the screen. General, general painting supplies. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the biggest brush that I have. I'm going to grab some orange. And I'm going to grab just a tiny bit of brown. And I'm going to use my smallest palette knife class, uh, palette knife, um, I was thinking glass, <laughs> that was, this was on, um, 
my palette knife. I use my palette knife all the time to mix paint. It's really helpful. Um, but I'm going to use that just to mix this all together. Um, and I'm going to grab a little bit more orange. The color of this doesn't necessarily matter. Um, as long as it's a different color than what we're painting. And the orange might be a nice color um, behind where the sun's going to be. So just kind of mix that together real fast. I'm going to grab the biggest brush I have. And this does not have to be a solid color. You can see strokes in it. Um, you can see like your brush marks in it. And that's totally fine. I'm just going to grab some water here. If you've never done like a wash or anything like this before, it's super um, kind of freeing in a sense. Because we're just kind of just going to cover the whole thing in this orange. I'm doing this pretty quick because it really doesn't matter um, the brush strokes and everything. I'm using a good amount of water. I'm just moving it around. Maybe pull that down. I'm going to at the side of this. And if you had an even bigger brush, you could go even faster. Going to make sure I got all my sides. Now that we have that, we're going to kind of figure out where everything's going to be. Um, so I'm going to get out, uh, once I rinse this brush out, it's okay if we're doing this and it's not totally dry. Hi Lynn. We are just prepping an orange so that we can kind of, it's like a orangey, I added a little bit of brown. Um, and we're just, that's how we're prepping. Um, I'm going to take a medium to small, um, medium to small 
round brush, grab a little bit of orange and mix that in with this brown that's like already here. Just to make a slightly darker color. Um, and again, if you have a like a um, a ruler of some sort, or if you want to use tape, you'd have to let this dry to do that. Um, but figure out where your um, figure out where all your trees are going to be. At least like the main the main trees. Um, so I'm going to just, there's one that comes, there's like a larger one. This is just like bare minimum. I'm just going to draw these in. I think this is going to come down a little bit more. And I think there's going to be another one right here. Whenever you're doing long lines like this, hold your brush at the very end of it and you can even you can even put your wrists together so that you have something to rest it on sometimes that's helpful in getting long strokes this one's going to end There's those, and then there's one kind of in the middle. I think this one's going to come down more. It's kind of one in the middle here. One thing to make sure of is if you're if you're drawing these in and you're not using any traceable. Um, whenever you're drawing trees, even if they're straight trees like this, you want to make sure that nowhere above the roots is it thicker on top than it is below. So what I mean by that is you have a tree. Either it needs to be this, like the bottom either needs to be the same size as, as the top or it needs to be slightly bigger because trees, as they grow, they start off small and then gradually this part keeps getting bigger and bigger. So if you look at my hand, this is the trunk or this is the, the you know, the base of the branch and this is all the little things. Each part, each section is going to be smaller as you go out. So all the little tree trunks that come out are going to be smaller than the base of the trunk. And that's a good like reminder is just look at your hand where it comes out of your arm, you know, is bigger and everything that's the furthest from the trunk essentially is going to be smaller. Um, and there's just a couple other big ones. We're not going to put in all of them right now. We're just going to put in our main ones so that I kind of know where... Like, so I have some reference point, reference point, 
reference points. Why can't I say that? Reference points. I don't know what I'm trying to say now. And if this brown isn't going on very easily, just grab some more water with it and it should go on easier. All right, real quick, I'm gonna get out some white and I'm going to put in my sun. Now this is important, why? Because I'm about to put in these dark areas and I wanna make sure that I know where where I'm going with this. Uh, let's see. I'm going to put it on this side. General sun area. Okay, um, this is about where this is, kind of, I'm just going to put in a little, a little bit of a horizon, not really a horizon because there's a bunch of trees here in the back, but close enough. And each of these is going to have a little bit. Now you don't have to do this because we're gonna be and we're gonna end up coloring all of this black. But I want you to get a feel for where everything is pointing. And if you're not sure, put your put your um your brush up and figure out which direction from the sun to the base which direction it's going go to the bottom of the tree and that's going to be the direction that it's going to go and all the way over there it's going to go over there that direction so again we're going to be covering this whole thing with black but That'll give you an idea. Try it now so you can like get it in your brain of like where everything's kind of gonna go and that will help later. Um, okay, so I have a few of these. I think that's probably as good as I want to go for now. Um, let's go ahead and put in our white and our kind of a bluish sky. Um, and we'll go from there. I'm gonna grab my white. And just the tiniest bit of blue. going to kind of wipe these down with my finger because they're not as dry as I want them to be but you can always go around it so I'm going to get my biggest brush and actually I'm going to get my filbert I like to I personally like to do backgrounds in a filbert brush because um, I feel like you have less blending issues um, but the sky, you probably won't be able to see much of the sky anyway, so it probably doesn't matter. But that's just personal preference. So I'm going to grab just a tiny bit of this blue and mix it in with my brush. I'm not going to use a palette knife for this because it's just going to go... It's not, it's not enough of a blue to really make a difference, but I can see it.
And now because we've prepped with this orange, I can really see if I've covered up enough of this. And it has a nice undertone. And I'm not going to use any water with this because I want it to be thick. As I go off into further away from the right side, I'm just going to go into pure white. Because the closer we get to the sun, the lighter it's going to be. Grab some more white. If you need like a little bit of water to help it move, that's fine. Um, but just make sure that you don't put too much water in your mixture of white or else it'll become translucent. And as much as like it is cool to see some of the orange in the background, um, we don't want to see too much of it. And after I'm done with each section, I just go over, over the whole thing while it's still wet so that everything is up and down.
I'm not being too precise about my um, my trunks that I've put in here because I'm gonna go over them with black anyways, so it's okay. Um, all right, we are going to make our different greens. Um, actually, let's do our black first. We'll do our black and then we'll make our greens uh, while the black is drying. So go ahead and rinse that brush off. So I have a bunch of black. And I'm gonna mix just a tiny bit of water in this to make it easier to move. And I'm just going to put on this whole bottom area. might have seen counterproductive to put in our um, our trunks before but at least for, like I don't know about you but for me sometimes it's nice just to be able to block in something so that I like I know where I'm going with it you know And at least now I have an idea in my head of like how far each of these trees are going. And it's easier to cover up that orange than it would be the white because we've already kind of prepped our canvas. So here's the fun part. Here's where you get to go down. Put in your your trunks. Um, if your white is still wet, then I would suggest starting on the other side. Maybe finish all your bottom black first. And don't worry too much about this uh, horizon area because we're going to be covering it with our greens and our different colors.
And for anyone wondering, why are we painting black when the bottom is clearly green? Well, we are doing a fun technique of putting in all of our darks first and then creating light with our top coats as we go. Because without the dark, we can't have the light. Our lights won't show if there's nothing to put on top of them. Um, all right, so while that is drying, let me go ahead and just do this bottom real fast and my side. And while this black is drying, we are going to mix up our greens. We have a few different greens. while this is drying and we will put in more more trees I promise but we're doing it we're doing it in layers we're gonna do the back foliage and then we're going to um, put a, the rest of the trees on top of that so there's no point in putting them in now because once we do the the back foliage we're gonna have to go over them again so we might as well wait um, okay, let's make our greens. I'm going to leave this white because I'm going to put some green in it. And make three greens that make you happy. So we have a lighter green, a mid green, and then a darker green. So I'm going to have my darker green here. My lighter green, and I'll make a whiter green in a bit. So I'm going to mix uh, a couple, couple, couple different colors together. I have my dark green. I'm gonna add the tiniest bit of yellow to that one, and then I have my little bit of white and green. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of yellow to that one, and then I'm gonna mix those two colors up uh, first and see where where I need the third color. Okay. Um, this I'm going for kind of a darker brown, a darker one. So I'm gonna mix. Uh, I'm going to mix a tiny bit of brown and a touch of this phthalo blue. So for my dark green, it's mostly green with a little bit of yellow, a little bit of brown, and a touch of blue. Let's mix all that together and see what we have. Does anybody ever do that? Instead of mixing like one color in at a time, you just put a bunch of colors together and see what comes out. Maybe that's just me because I know a little bit more of color theory. Like I know adding one color, like what it's going to do to the overall color. Okay, I like that. I'm gonna mix this in here. And this is pretty much the color I expected. So yeah, so I'm gonna need that middle tone and actually I'm gonna grab a tiny bit more yellow with this one. Um, and a tiny bit more yellow with my dark one. put a tad bit more white in here. Alright, so we're going to have three different greens. I'm just going to mix this yellow in here. 
Um, sometimes I like having an undertone, um, and it gives some different it gives some different tones to the painting. Um, another reason is why is sometimes it's hard to figure out where my white is if I don't have something to contrast it with. Um, if you don't like doing the undertones, you can definitely just paint white um, and that's totally fine. Um, some people think it's just an extra unnecessary step, which that's totally valid. Some, sometimes it can be. Um, but I like to have, sometimes I like to have like an underpainting um, for that. Um, and for specific classes, um, Having, having an underpainting can add um, some like texture to it. I think it's up to personal preference. All right, so here are the two greens. I'm gonna grab some of my dark green and some of my light green and mix those together to make like a medium tone. All right, that's good. So now that I have my three greens, I'm going to take my lightest one and start from the top. And I'm just going to I'm just going to roughly put this in. And then as I come down, I'm going to start putting in my my darker color. Um, be careful if your black isn't totally dry. Um, you might pull in some of that black. But depending on how dark you want to go in the in the background, it's up to you. I stay with this light up here. Don't worry too much about the top because I'm gonna come back. We're gonna come back in with our um, our filbert brush. Or sorry, not our filbert brush. Our um, our fan brush, and add some texture there. Just note that the closer that you get to the sun area the lighter you're going to want to stay. So I'm actually not going to put my darkest color over here. And you can blend it if you want to by going up and down. But again, we're going to come back with our we're going to come back with our um, our fan brush and add in some of that color. I'm going to add some of my dark green just as the at the base here. Add some more dark green. Just slightly blending it. It's okay if it's um, not blended totally.
right, so now that I kind of have the first coating of this green, I'm going to rinse that brush out and grab a mm, small to medium um, fan brush. And I'm gonna start with the lighter color first. And I'm gonna start putting in like tops of trees and this is a great place to start practicing your uh, your trees and like if you've never used a uh, br like a brush like this before you'll start you'll go up and then you'll just go side to side now again I say practice because you're not gonna see a lot of this in the background so um, sometimes you really only have to do like the tops of it <laughs> As you can tell, you can barely even see it, but it looks like trees in the back. And I'm really just doing the tops here. Tops of these trees. And then once I have that, you can kind of see the tops there, all along there. You're gonna do the same thing, but with the kind of like the next, the next stage. And put in some of these tops, tops of the, and if you wanted to add in some, um, some extra in there you can what I mean by extra is like a little bit more than just the top you can add a little bit more of the sides of it and you'll see because we went down into the other colors it just blends in to everything that's around it and you'll slowly start adding those layers. Now I'm gonna go in with the darkest green. I'm gonna start from a little bit lower, not so high. I'm gonna start putting in some evergreens in the back, just little by little. I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. So I'm starting off by I'm going from the bottom up and I'm creating a tree by just pouncing. And then I'm starting with the corner of my brush and I'm starting at the top and just going back and forth and then slowly putting down more of my brush as I go down and get bigger. And for some of these, I don't even need to, um, I don't even need to do that. Just doing one of these is like enough. Doing some trees in the back. I'm going to 
gonna get some black. I'm going to deviate from the texture just a little bit, just so you guys know. Um, I'm going to add a little bit, another layer of this. I'm going a little bit darker than the picture just so that I can get a little bit more of a contrast. And I'm going to grab my green and black to help transition um, this section a little bit better, just to kind of help that, just so it's not so stark of a contrast. Maybe there's some bushes in the back or... Um, Okay. Looking pretty good. Um, I have already forgotten how you started the greens on the canvas, the brush strokes. Uh, what do you mean? Like you forgot that I started doing the green with a brush? rather than the fan brush. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I probably say this in a lot of classes, but I probably should stay, say it more um, to trust the process. A lot of times I think, no, I didn't start with the fan. I started with, I started with this brush and I just put in, um, I just put in the uh, like main colors, like light on top, medium color in the middle, and then darker on the bottom. And then I came back and added essentially tops with the same colors with the fan brush. And I added like textures to make it look like um, to make it look like uh, like tree tops. But the reason you see the tops and then it fades into the bottom is because I'm putting a darker color over the top of a lighter color but then it fades into the color that it actually is. Tricks. Um, but yeah, just trust the process and keep going. I'm going to, probably won't see it eventually, but for right now it's bugging me that this tree is like this. Okay. Um, okay, now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and put in all of our dark trees, all of our trees. Now you can do this in brown or black. It's really up to you. If you want to go photorealism, um, then I would suggest doing um, some dark brown and then you can always lighten it up with your different colors. Um, I'm going to think I'm going to do a dark brown. It just kind of depends on what style you want. You could just do, you could just do black if you wanted to be simple. Um, and honestly, I think maybe I'll just do black. I'm just going to do black. I think it's easier that way. Um, if you want to do it photorealism, you could do the trunks all in brown. Um, and then add your like highlights and sunlights to that. Um, but I think I'm just going to go and do it this way. Now, again, if you have some sort of a ruler that you want to use, 
feel free to use that. And if not, then don't stress if they're not perfectly straight. Just don't stress. It's a painting. People know it's a painting. Unless you're like so good at painting straight that <laughs> that people think it's real. But if that's the case, then you don't need to be tanky classes from me. <laughs> All right, so I'm just blackening the ones that I already have. I'm gonna need a little bit more black here. Um, and now I'm just going to put a ton of trees in um, of all different sizes. You can use whatever brush you feel equipped to do this in. Um, it could be a liner brush, it could be a large brush, a small brush, whatever, however you feel like you need to do this. Um, and I'm just going to take my time What's great about a painting like this is if you mess up, just make the tree thicker. And it's a thicker tree, right? <laughs> Sounds great. Maybe when you're first starting out, try to do some really thin trees. And then if you can't do them that thin, then you can make them thicker. Like I think I want this one thicker, but that's because of the placement, not because I think I didn't do it well. I would just make sure that you have a good variety of thick and thinner ones. To be fair, not all of them are straight. Some of them are crooked. Some of them, some of them branch off.
also the faster you go the more straight lined theoretically it'll be because you're staying you're staying in one spot um, with less time which means you have less less time to like wiggle your brush Um, it all depends on what you're comfortable with. I'm using one brush so that I can do thick and thin lines at the same time. I'm also using a flat brush or like a, um, a brush that is like, uh, r rather than like a round brush, um, so that I can hold more paint and do more lines, um, better so it's all up to your own comfortability I am super comfortable with my large filbert um, but not everybody is with doing small lines honestly doing doing small lines with a filbert with a large filbert is one of better like one of the cool things about a filbert is that I can do I feel confident in doing that but obviously if you're not comfortable doing that or you have tried and you're not as good at it then it might be better to have a few different um, a few different brushes um, and just as a personal note I like going from top to bottom because that means I can start off small like the smallest that I can and then as I go down I can put down a little bit more pressure and make the bottom a little bit bigger for me I feel like it's harder to go tinier I wouldn't worry too much about the tops of it though because we're going to be putting foliage like dark foliage at the top um so all right um let's go ahead and put in our sun Uh, 
Uh, we'll put our sun in so we can figure out where our sun rays are going to come from. And then we'll do our sun rays. I'm just going to grab a round brush. And I think I was going to have it come from over here. Where, where it's close to the, um, the, uh, trunks, you can grab a little bit of this brown and put some brown on where the white should be. And it'll make it look like it's kind of peering through. Okay, I'm going to grab, let's go ahead and do our sun rays real fast. I'm going to make sure that my brush is fairly clean. And I'm going to use a flat brush, okay? And the reason for this is so that I can get a clean line if I need to. I'm going to grab some white and a little bit of water. And we're going to go across all of this. So you are gonna to wanna to make sure that it's for the most part dry. Um, you're going to go over all of it and then we're gonna come back over the ones that are like in front, like these four big ones that we originally painted. Um, those are gonna be like in front of the sun rays. So think about your sun rays coming in straight lines and I'll just I'll just do this real fast um, let's see I'm gonna come this way now you can do it one of two way you can do it like I did of doing a flat brush like this going flat on it or you can turn it to the side and have like a harsher line a little bit too harsh um, and it's, it's kind of up to you. You can kind of go, um, a little bit of both. Just try to make sure that you are going straight. And I think I'm gonna add just the tiniest bit of yellow to this white. I think it will help give it kind of that nature-y vibe. Just a tiny bit of yellow. And if this is your first time doing this, um, you're gonna have to do a little bit of guesswork with the water to paint ratio um, just do it once and if it's too watery you'll know because um, it'll either drip um, or it'll be too potent um, and if or you might just have too much paint on your brush and if it's you don't have enough water then it's going to come across um, um, super Kind of like that. Um, 
So just have a little bit of fun with it and add, add some sun rays. Obviously, don't go too crazy. Alright, so this is what mine looks like so far. Um, now we are going to put in some foliage up top. And you can do this a couple different ways. You can do it, if you don't have a fan brush, you can just get a, um, a thick brush, like a thick round brush, and do kind of like individual things. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do this in two or three spurts. Um, we're gonna have our light green. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of whatever green I have left. I think I'm going to use this medium green. And I'm going to add yellow to it, some yellow and white to get it pretty light. So I have yellow, white, and a little bit of this green. going to take just a little bit of this and I'm going to just put it in the top and in the back just a little bit. And this is going to um, this is going to act as like the it's hitting the light before it hits the dark. I'm going to come in with this dark green. And just add some of this on top. Not in any particular order, just adding some green on the top. I'm going to add a little bit of green in kind of in between the trees a little bit. going to switch to my round brush. I'm using a larger round brush and I'm going to get some black and I'm going to go over these main trees. So while that foliage dries, I'm going to go over my main trees with black. So that's this one. And 
And what's interesting is black usually puts things in the back and highlights bring it forward. But since our lighting is coming from behind, it's going to pull it forward. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna pay attention. I'm gonna go all the way down to where I know this was going, what we did in the very beginning of how far this goes down. I'm gonna go down about that far. And then if you'll remember the direction of our, um, of our shadow, I'm just going to go that route. And I'm gonna do the same thing of this one. And I'm gonna put in a couple more here. That are in front of this. And I'm also putting in like the shadow of where I think the shadow would go. And there's one over here that I wanna put in. I think that's probably all of the dark ones that I'm putting back in. And now you're starting to see some of that depth, right? All right, I'm going to brighten up my sun again because I don't know what happened, but it has like a brown streak on it. Probably did that when I was doing the sun rays. Now I'm going to come in with some black and put in some dark some dark leaves. Over my green. with my round brush.
I just did the top with the filbert just to do that a bit faster. But with these, I kind of want to have a little bit more precision. A lot of it's just dabbing I'm kind of going pretending like if there's branches back here like what would that look like There's a couple branches up the bottom here. Just to kind of break it up. Alright, and here is the fun part. Now we get to put in our grass, which is like I'm so excited. All right, so first we're gonna start with our dark, our darkest green first. So I think I might have to make a little bit of my dark green. Which was just my darkest green plus a little bit of brown and a little bit of yellow, if I'm remembering correctly. Alright, so as we're doing this bottom section, you want to make sure that you don't cover up all the black. So for one, the black is going to remain in the... Um, now again, my painting, I wanted to do a little bit more of a contrast. Um, so if you want to go more photorealism, then you can do a little bit more green and less black. Um, but for this class, I want to add a little bit of this green here and I'm going to kind of keep in some of this, um, I'm going to keep this black in here. And I'm going to slowly start adding this green. With this, I have my um, just a small filbert, or sorry, a small fan brush. You 
you kind of can't see much right now but just know that <laughs> know that it's there I'm gonna lighten it up just a little bit and add this in different areas of green grass. Maybe I'll even add some yellow to it here. And I'm going to start going going up. Maybe there's even some bushes down here at the bottom. And play with your different textures. And if you ever go over a part that you don't, that you didn't mean to, that you like need to put black, you can just go back in and add your black. Maybe there's even some more black shadows in this area. I'm going to add a little bit more of this yellow that we used at the top here and just really put in some of this yellow here.
almost want to get a little bit more black in here. At this point, I'm just kind of playing around um, and adding different things. I'm going to get a little bit of orange and I'm going to add just a tiny bit of an oranginess to around the sun. I think that would make it pop just a little bit. So I'm going to. Add just a little bit of that. That did make the sun pop just a little bit by adding that kind of orange hue to it. I'm going to go back in with just my white and really whiten up this area. Maybe even do a little bit of sun rays going out from this area. I think I'm going to add just a little bit of green to this area. Just I feel like it's a little bit too dark. I think I'm also going to take my liner brush and add a couple lines here in the front. And at this point, this is just me painting, and I'm not um, I'm not even looking at the original anymore because mine differs from the original, and I like that, and I think that's okay. And at some point, you have to just be like, okay, this is mine, and be okay with it being different. So I'm just going to add some liner lines with my liner brush. I'm adding just like some highlight grass in between here.
think my la my right side needs a little bit of some highlight grass. It looks less green on camera than it actually is. In person, it's, it's a lot more green. If there's anything else I want to add, um, I think I'm going to add a little bit of brown to my trees. And let me see. Let me see just what this brown does and see if I want to add it. I think I like it, but I want it. I want it to be a tad bit brighter. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lighten it up. So I'm gonna add a little bit of brown onto the trees, um, and I'm going to take my raw umber, add a tiny bit of orange, um, let's see, where's my, I'm gonna mix that together, just so it's a little bit warmer and not so dark. And I'm going to take a flat brush. And I'm gonna take a flat brush so that I can go up to the, the edge of it and kind of pull to the side. I don't know if you can see much on the camera. Maybe I'll lighten it up a bit.
Okay, so here's a little bit. I don't know if you can really see it, if it really translate on the camera. I think I want to go just a tad bit later, but I think I want to add yellow. Okay, I added just a little bit of white and I think that's going to help. And I'm just going to put it on like the outer edge of this. Yeah, I like that. to go. All right, so I'm just kind of putting it on the edges. I think that that gives a really nice edge to it. And where the sun is hitting it. And then it kind of highlights, it kind of gives you a little bit more depth so all I did was add a very, very faint line on the left side of a bunch of the trees that were like a little bit closer. And I think that really helped give some, some character to it. All right, I think, I think we are done. I think I'm done. I think I want to be done. Um, I think I'm going to add just some texture on the bottom just so that it's not um, pure black. Um, All right.
right. And there we go. A fun nature's sun rays. And I don't know why my lighting is so off. It looks so gray on camera, but it's definitely like, it's definitely greener than that. So I apologize um, for my camera. The settings must be off. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this class. I hope you learned from th something from it. And I look forward to seeing um, all of your paintings. And yeah, if you painted this, if you painted along, uh, make sure to join our Facebook group. Um, I will post a link right now. It is the uh, facebook.com slash groups slash Samantha Anderson artist and you can um, share your work there. I will say that um, I so appreciate everyone um, painting with me. If you're interested in more classes like this, I also have a Patreon. Um, in that Patreon, uh, we actually just finished uh, this class. It's now available. Um, it was available on Friday. So if you like tea and you like books, um, feel free to go ahead and check that one out. This week, I look forward to painting our, um, I look forward to painting our Northern Lights. And I actually just did a, a quick 10 minute painting of that one. And it looks like this. I'm super excited for it. I'm super excited to paint it on a bigger scale. Um, so if you're interested in anything and classes like that, please go and check out my Patreon. Um, I would love it. Um, it's just a way to support me while also getting exclusive content like specific classes that you guys ask for. So, um, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.